Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the next in our session on Monday Market Matters here at Active Trades. Great to uh, have you all here with us today. I hope you've uh, had a good weekend. hope you uh, enjoyed last week's rather uh, interesting markets and are uh, ready for a, uh, another good week ahead in uh, financial markets. So uh, today, here we are, we're going to be talking about managing intraday risk, um, which is a, well, it's a useful topic every day of the week, but uh, especially after what we've seen over the last few days, it's probably quite uh, quite prevalent for some people, especially those uh, operating in certain asset classes, but more of that uh, later. For those of you uh, uh, joining us for the first time, my name's Paul, I'll be your uh, guide through the uh, Monday Market Matters Active Trades webinars. So what are we gonna talk about today? Um, we'll do, as always, just a little bit of explanation of the Monday Market Matters for those of you joining us for the first time. We'll talk a little bit about why managing risk is so important. And those of you who know me will know that, you know, it's something that I go on about every single time of day. We'll talk about what can we do to help ourselves, all right? And uh, what are some additional tactics and uh, techniques we can use to help us improve our managing risk when it comes to intraday trading. So we'll have a couple of overall guidelines, and then I'll give you a kind of sort of a, a few rules that would actually just help you. For those of you who are, you know, let's say new to trading and, you know, uh, and uh, new to engaging with markets. And even if you are not necessarily an intraday trader, there, there will be, of course, value and insight in terms of just understanding how to manage risk well. And then as always, because it's Monday Market Matters, what we will do is we'll finish up by having a look at the live markets as we start the uh, open of the US markets uh, and have a little look at what, uh, what might be in store for us uh, in this coming week. For those who don't know, my name is Paul, I've traded for many years now, okay, traded for funds, traded for clients, okay, I primarily like to focus on FX indices and commodities for my own trading, my longer term trading, I tend to be a trend trader, and for those of you a shorter term trader, I tend to be a reversal or an intraday, uh, uh, rever mean reversion trader, uh, which, you know, all of which will be come across as we go through these sessions, uh, I'll be sharing all my kind of experience and insight as, uh, as we've gone through that. So when it comes to uh, Monday Market Matters, this is now going to be a regular webinar series every uh, kind of Monday, two o'clock London time. The idea is really just to help traders start the week in the right frame as we prepare for the opening of the uh, the US markets. Um, you know, I appreciate here at Active Trades that you know we have a you know we have a you know a broad range of experience for our sessions for people who join us. Uh, you know, from complete beginners to experienced traders, you're all very welcome. There'll be something here for everybody, and we'll also just try and help new traders just. Uh, get an understanding and the right frame of our mind when they're starting trading the markets uh, and also recognize that we have a truly global audience who joins us here you know wherever you are in the world it's great to have you here with us you know here at active trades you know it's fantastic to see you joining here we hope you know we hope you're uh, we hope you're all well and enjoying this rather eventful uh, eventful year but every two o'clock london time on monday market matters what we'll do is we'll have a little chat about the news as in you know what kind of major news is coming out for the week ahead We'll do a main piece on some education, so you know something to help build your trading knowledge. Today, we're going to talk about managing intraday risk. Um, as we go through sessions, we'll talk about the the various active trades platforms and um, tools. So you know that will be MT4, MT5, Active Trader. Okay, we'll build that in. Uh, and as I said, we'll finish off by looking at the live market at the start of the US session for the week, just being able to take a look at what's going on and what's happening, and whether there's uh, anything that we might want to sort of just focus on for the uh, for the start of the the US session. So lots for us to cover in our sessions, okay? Lots for us to share with you here. And uh, as always, you know, we say that we want these sessions to be useful and insightful and helpful to you. So if you have any particular questions during the session, just put them into the, uh, the chat box. Or if there's particular topics that you'd like to see us cover, by all means, you know, you'll see it at the end we'll provide you with the number and the uh, email address for active trades and you're very welcome to sort of send us through any if you've got feedback or any thoughts or comments all of which will help us because you know, as i said we want to make these sessions as as useful and helpful for you as we possibly can so let's talk about uh, the news okay last week was a very very eventful news week okay we had lots of news in terms of the major ones being you know the US CPI numbers that came out last Thursday but also we had uh, UK GDP numbers for Q3 in the morning you know uh, and there was a lot of news came out and um, let's just say markets got a little bit giddy okay in terms of getting ahead of themselves with some of the news that came out there uh, and so it's important for us to see well what extra news have we got coming out this week you know what I what I say to very new traders is um, you know and I repeat this every week is that I, I don't expect new traders to be able to 
analyze the upcoming news okay i don't expect you to be able to fully understand okay the differences and the uh, the nuances of news but what i do expect and what i do implore new traders is is it's unbelievably important to know when that news is coming out okay when that form of news is coming out you find that out from an economic calendar you know which there will be well there's plenty on the internet but also you'll find one on the uh, active trades website but equally, they will also send out an email every Monday morning, which is, I just take a clip from here, which is also just giving you a little bit of heads up of the kind of the major news that's coming out that week ahead. So, as I said, I don't expect you to, to be able to understand and decipher all the news, but it is very important, you know, when that news is coming out, because invariably when that big news comes out, there will be some volatility. And, uh, you know, I try to implore to people that volatility is a double-edged sword. It's a fabulous thing when you're on the right side of it, but it can be a challenging thing when you're on the wrong side of it. So what we do want to do is make sure we're, to use an old kind of acronym, you know, or uh, analogy, you're not stepping in front of a freight train, okay, which is uh, unlikely to, to end well. So um, what we have uh, today and this week, okay, is that, you know, I think we've had, we've also got, you know, members of the uh, US Fed talking, but also there's a, there's the G20 meeting is starting, okay, in uh, Indonesia, okay, and we'll have, um, undoubtedly elements are coming out of that from the conversation between Biden and President Xi from China and how that works out. Um, we also have, you know, a kind of, um, there's quite a lot of news coming out, but it's, it's not as, it's not as, let's say, chunky as the news that we saw last week, but there's plenty there that will move markets. So things like CPI for the UK is released, all right? And also you'll see US retail sales on Wednesday. Um, on Thursday, all right, what we will also be interested, certainly here in the UK, is that Finally, the uh, the UK UK government will be publishing their uh, their autumn statement, and of course, people will be looking to see the implications of that. You know, have uh, Mr. Sonak and Mr. Uh, uh, Hunt, you know, uh, gained control of basically turning the UK into a high tax, low growth uh, economy, um, and uh, you know, they will be looking to see whether that is actually comes through in that, and invariably that will have volatility for both you know uh, GBP and also for the uh, UK FTSE. Uh, and also we get uh, UK retail sales Friday and also the US publishes its home sales data, which is useful as well. So, as I said, it's important to know when that news is coming out. There's lots coming out. Okay, so all of that will move markets about a little bit. And, uh, you know, that can that can be both a threat and an opportunity. If you are an educated trader, you know, from joining these sessions, that can provide it as an opportunity. If, you know, if you're uneducated in terms of you know not sort of doing the work or have you well then it could become a threat and, and that's not what we want we want people here to to be able to sort of engage with markets and see it as a fabulous opportunity for us all so why don't we switch across now and have a little chat about education right and what particularly talking about is managing risk and, and really in particular joining intraday trading and, and the reason i focus on the intraday trade is that i, I do appreciate there were lots of people who will be joining us who will be getting ready to trade intraday on the u.s sessions this afternoon but what i will talk about is how the, the kind of the thoughts and the concepts that i share with you you, you know it doesn't matter whether you're trading a five minute chart or a monthly chart okay you know good solid risk management principles should be the bedrock all right, from which all of your other trading activities are built from, all right, managing risk becomes unbelievably important. But as the slide says there, lots of people are attracted to intraday trading due to its pace and the many opportunities. Um, but what we'll find is, you know, when you're engaging with intraday markets, your engagement is speeded up and what tends to happen is it actually makes it easier to make mistakes. If you're a little bit experienced, not entirely sure what you're doing. So with that in mind, it is imperative to be able to keenly manage risk during such fast paced engagements. And what we'll do is today is we'll look at managing risk during uh, intraday trading. That's what we'll focus on. But as I said, all the ideas and concepts, you know, will stand you in good stead, regardless of how you particularly trade and engage with markets. So firstly, let's little, have a little chat about intraday trading. All right, so let's have a little chat about it because you know um, what I tend to say is that you know if you're if you're you know if you're trading well and you know you're uh, you know a few months or a year or two into your trading, well then you know you've 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 gone much further than most traders. And actually, what I tell people is that it's actually not terribly hard to get into the top twenty percent of traders in the world. You know, and if you have managed to manage risk and to to you know to to learn from your uh, trading experiences. It's actually not that hard to get into the top 20% of traders by, you know, ensuring that you're managing risk, you know, in which case you can give yourself a pat on the back. But the, the, the reality is, is that, you know, it's then about your trading 
you're doing about moving yourself from being in the top 20 percent to being in the top two percent that's what you're that's what you're aiming for that's what you're trying to work towards you know, and that that journey can take as long as a piece of string but if you've made it so far well well done you can give yourself a pat on the back and uh, so you know what, what what's the prize okay well you know without wanting to to be maybe too dramatic is to recognize that you know when you're trading intraday markets especially if you're trading intraday markets in the u.s markets you're swimming you know you're going to be swimming with the great white sharks now okay and uh, having done that that photo that you see there having swam with great white sharks you know i can assure you that it is all about managing risk okay it is all about doing things properly and uh, not wanting to uh, not wanting to sort of get uh, outside yourself because invariably you can end up in a lot of trouble and what i mean by that is that you know you're going to have some of the best traders in the world okay operating especially in in us markets on an intraday basis you know there's some of those uh, traders are you know, absolutely fantastic i've been very fortunate to know a few of them work with them absolutely superb traders okay and it's only right that as you know as your new trader is that you know you, you learn from them show them the respect okay and, and and you know take on board their learning lessons that will help you become the very best trader that you can be in that that's you know that's what you know i want on a personal level as well you know we want here is that you know for you to be the very best trader that you possibly can be okay and, and managing risk is you know is one of the uh, is one of the as I said one of the key bedrocks that you have to do and uh, what I can say from my own experiences from trading for myself from teaching and coaching and mentoring hundreds and thousands over the years and and from actually working on trading floors is that the very best traders that I have had the fortune to work with or coach train etc they have all been exceptionally good at managing risk all right they're all exceptionally good at managing risk and and, and you know that's the message I want to constantly get uh, across to you. And when it comes to basically how we can start to look at managing that intraday risk, well, you know, this is um, this is a great. There's a couple of great quotes coming in. This is from first the Sun Tzu, the Chinese uh, general, okay, legendary Chinese general. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. And um, what does that actually mean when it comes to, uh, to to trading wise? Well, you know, the kind of the next quote sort of fills it out better for ourselves from the old pogo. Uh, stick uh, from the Pogo cartoon, which is, you know, we've met the enemy and he is us. And what I tend to find is from all my work is that, you know, when traders are engaging in intraday trading, they tend to do more damage to themselves than anything that, you know, markets may do. And a lot of that is because, you know, they, things are happening very fast, the opportunities to make mistakes occur and they make mistakes all right you know and so you know most traders they are more of a danger to themselves than anything else all right we have met the enemy and he is us and it's important for us to know ourselves all right it really is unbelievably important to, to know ourselves and that links into let's say a, a deeper longer project about terms of improving your trading performance which is a thread which will run through these sessions but part of that is about knowing who you are we all have our strengths and weaknesses okay none of us are none of us are perfect we all have you know um, particular skills and talents and experiences that we can bring to trading that can help us and can improve our trading but some others may challenge us and, and it's about unveiling them and understanding them you know in terms of how you operate and how you see markets and how you see risk how you see opportunity how you see threats understanding that is is crucially important and because of intraday trading can be very dynamic, can be very intense. It's not unusual for intraday traders to have a slump in their performance. Okay, it happens. It is part of your trading experience. Nobody escapes that. Okay, nobody escapes that. It doesn't matter whether you're you know, the best trader in the world or a new trader. You will have challenging periods. You will have slumps in performance. Everybody does. But the important thing is how you manage them will determine your success all right how you manage them will determine your success and you know what we see is human beings respond to those challenges in very different ways some people act like petulant children and want to throw their toys out of the cot and you know want to you know throw phones and laptops and smash screens which all of which i have seen when on trading floors all of which i've seen others will take you know take their a uh, little bit of time step away actually review their performance and then look to how they can improve what can they learn what they can they use to get better and it tends to be those latter traders the ones who basically you know take it away deep refit okay learn from it and then apply the, the kind of those lessons they're the ones who tend to get better and better as traders and they're the ones who i see to go on to have you know um, considerable success and that's that's the kind of one of the messages and themes you'll find me constantly sort of you know reaffirming here throughout our particular sessions but 
as I said, when it comes to intraday trading, we've met the enemy and the, and he is us. All right. You know, you are, you are your, uh, you know, you are your, uh, your, 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 your best trading advocate uh, and also your most challenging trading advocate again okay? about understanding and knowing and working with that can help you enormously. And so, and you will hear me talk about this is that, you know, when you're intraday trading, intraday risk management becomes key. And one of the things that I have found and helped both myself and other traders is about starting to have simple checklists, simple processes, simple standard operating procedures, things that we have talked a little bit about before in previous sessions here, okay, the importance of them uh, and how just having a very simple little checklist can help you just make sure that you're always doing the right things when you're intraday trading, make sure that you don't miss anything, okay, because you know, it's easily done, things are happening fast, you're a human being, things are happening. And I've talked about before that, you know, if you want to read a side book about it, I can completely uh, recommend the Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande. I mean, he's actually a Harvard trained surgeon, which might seem, you know, a bit of a strange, um, you know, talk about because it's not really about trading. But actually, as you read it, you realize it is actually all about trading. So it's a very good book and will help give you an indication of why when you're operating in fast paced, dynamic, intense environments, having things like checklists, processes, standard operating procedures can help you, all right? And, uh, you know, I, I can talk about it uh, myself from my own personal experience, from my youth. You know, the checklist manifesto came out of um, military aviation, multi-engine flying, okay, as, as the aircraft became more complex in the 1930s, they found that accidents sort of, you know, the accident rate went up and realized it was just that basically people were missing things, okay? Pilots were making mistakes because they, so much was happening. And so they had identified checklists and that actually helped cut down the accident and mistake list massively. And that is actually completely useful for trading as well, okay? Completely useful for trading in terms of being able to effectively just, um, you know, use that, use that gain knowledge from other environments to help you make the better trade yourself. And that's, uh, that becomes very important to us. And so I always suggest traders, have a read of that book. It will help you as a trader. So let's talk about setting the right pre-market routine. Okay, let's sort of talk about doing the routine before we do it. I mean, we've touched on this a little bit before, but you know we're gonna be talking about using something like price action trading, intraday trading. What we suggest is have a very, very simple routine. Just help it so that you're doing the right things every time, okay, and then making sure that you're doing. So things like whenever you open a chart, identify the significant levels on the monthly, the weekly, and the daily charts. Intraday traders might be saying, well, why do I care about that, Paul? You know, I'm a five-minute chart trader. Why do I care what's going on on the monthly, and the weekly, and the daily chart? And there is an element of truth to that, but what we're talking about is if you're identifying those significant levels, that can give you a pre, you know, a little bit of pre-warning, okay? We don't want to be buying into resistance. We don't want to be selling into support. We want to know where those levels are so that we can actually avoid them or be prepared to trade them when markets pivot around them. What I talk about is, you know, as we all dig deeper in, you know, we've talked about price action triggers, okay? Looking for price action triggers at particular levels, and we've talked about a few of those, okay, over the last few weeks all of which you will find on the Active Trades webinar archive, but equally, you know, we'll talk more about them in future sessions. Uh, one of the things that I talk about is that, you know, when you're a intraday trader and when you're a new trader, sometimes traders become, you know, a little bit excitable. They get a little bit giddy because they see what they think might be a price action trigger. You know, maybe it's an engulfing candle, maybe it's a pin bar, maybe it's an inside bar, and they see it starting to form and they think they can get ahead it starts okay in the rest of the market and they'll basically look to trade okay before that candle is completed as an intraday trader you need to ensure that you basically just focus on making sure that you only trade on the break of the candle the candle needs to complete so if you're trading a one minute chart five minute ten minute fifteen minute chart let the candle complete then trade the break of that candle we never trade about that stop loss, okay? And a stop loss, as a general rule, should be at the, the other side of that candle at least, all right? And it should be you know, where your idea is invalidated. And we'll look at that on the charts in a moment, okay? What I always suggest is that you never risk more than 1% per trade. We'll talk a little bit about that more in a couple of slides time. Uh, and I, you'll find I'm always very big big on things like asymmetric reward to risk, okay? So if I'm going to risk £100, I want to be able to have an, an idea that will generate £200, £300, £400, £500. That's asymmetric reward to risk. That's what we're looking for, okay? So that's what we're looking at. And, and it is very true. It is about rinse and repeat. 
you know, it's about getting into this routine a little bit like we just talked about the checklist because what will happen is it'll make sure you don't miss the major things. And that's what's important to us. Okay. You don't want to miss the major elements. So even things like missing, you know, what news is coming out for that session, that can be, you know, that can be challenging. Okay. And that's not what we want. What we want to be able to do is to ensure that we're doing the right things session after session, day after day, week after week, month after month. That's what we're particularly looking at. So when we start to delve into the depth of managing risk during intraday trading, well, it, what it's important to is, is, is let's set ourselves some rules and expectations. And a few simple rules that we can follow by, okay? Risk management is absolutely key, all right? Risk management is absolutely key. We honor it, it trade after trade, session after session, day after day. As you've heard me talk about, know what news is coming out for that particular session. What I also suggest is it possible to conduct your analysis before trading. And what I mean by that is, so for example, I do quite a bit of my analysis at weekends, or I might do it in the evening, or I might do it the morning before I actually actively switch to trading mode. So, you know, I'm not being distracted. I'm not being, you know, sort of uh, uh, my attention is not being kind of, you know, pulled away by, you know, uh, candles, you know, moving up and down. I can just focus. Also resist the temptation to trade out of session. What, what does that mean? So let's take, for example, something like an FX trading pair like the euro against the sterling, all right? Euro GBP. Well, um, you know, the vast majority of traders trading euro GBP are going to be European traders, going to be British traders. And really, they are working between about 7 p.m. 7 a.m. London time and 4 p.m. Um, London time, okay? So that is when the majority of the trading will occur in the euro GBP. So we're actively trying to, let's say, intraday trade it at, let's say, 10 o'clock in the evening London time is generally is generally a, a poor way to go about it. Okay, You want to trade during the main part of the session where the majority of protagonists are involved, which means you'll also have the best volume and volatility to be able to work with. It might sound a very simple and you know, common sense point, but ensure that you have a good internet connection. That in itself is another way of managing risk. You know, I very often, you know, I walk into a coffee shop and see people trying to trade in a in a coffee shop, okay, you know, uh, off their laptop in a very, very busy, in a very, very busy coffee shop, okay, where, you know, 50 people are all trying to get onto the same connection. Uh, so, you know, I'm not saying you can't do that because technology is fabulous, but what I'm just saying is make sure you've got a good internet connection when you're intraday trading. You don't want to be in a particular trade and then lose your connection to the market. That's not, you know, it's not the smartest way to operate. And also ensure you're rested and prepared for the session. This is, you know, it's intraday trading. I said things happen fast. Things move along really, really quickly. And what's important is to make sure that you're rested and prepared for the session that, you know, if you've had a late night, maybe you've been up, you know, maybe you've been out with your friends, maybe you've been, maybe you've been having an argument with your partner. All of these elements, okay, might affect your sleep, it might affect your rest, it might affect you just being a little bit groggy, a little bit slow in that morning, you know, and you have to be very, very sharp and alert and smart when you're uh, intraday trading. So just make sure that you're doing the right things possible. So. One of the things that uh, I do, okay, that can help you in terms of managing risk is to, first and foremost is start to plan your week out. And then I also score myself on certain performance criteria to see how, you know, my positive weeks are against my negative weeks in terms of, you know, how I'm doing in terms of managing myself, in terms of, you know, ch checking myself on how did I do my planning and my preparation, how did I do my trade selection, my trade management, my trade exits. What was my mental state like that day? What was my physical state? How did I do in evaluating, okay, my trading? What was my performance like? Equally, what was the fun factor? You know, that might sound a bit strange, but I can, sometimes I know myself, I can have a little bit of a perfectionist streak. I can sometimes take trading a bit too seriously, and I, and you have to take it seriously, but sometimes you can take it a bit too seriously. And so I have to build in things like fun fact, you know, what did I I enjoy all right about that trading session what did I take pleasure from okay and from that have a little bit of a daily process score so th this is the kind of thing this is a way of managing risk because if I can see how I'm operating that day that week that session I can amend myself accordingly because if I'm not feeling great if I'm if I'm feeling a bit slow if I'm feeling a bit sluggish well then actually maybe I won't intraday trade or maybe I will reduce my risk okay equally if everything is everything is brilliant, everything is 10 out of 10, well then equally I have to be concerned that maybe I could be getting overconfident, 
okay, maybe I'm getting a little bit like Icarus. I'm just flying a little bit too close to the sun uh, and I just need to rein myself in a little bit. So all of this data that you're collecting is fascinating and all of it is about helping you manage risk, okay? It's not just about where you put your stop loss, it's about managing the whole of you, okay, in terms of how you engage with markets and how you trade. And, uh, you know, I can assure you the very best traders that you will ever work and come across, they are doing this religiously day in day out okay they are doing the best at managing risk by managing themselves so let's have a, a few rules right let's have a few rules for managing risk during intraday trading and these are rules that i've learned over my experience okay uh, and these are things so rule number one rule number one for intraday trading is if you have three back-to-back -back losses on the trot well then you know knock it off knock it off okay uh, you know, what is a case of you are out of tune with the market, all right? Not that the market is out of tune with you, it is you that are out of the tune with the market. And, and it could be for a lot of reasons. It could be for reasons we've just talked about there that, you know, maybe you're, you're tired, you know, you're sluggish, your mental state isn't great, your physical state isn't great, okay? And you're just behind the drag curve. And the reason I use that photo of, you know, of two jets and a dogfight is because actually, you know, in my old days when we did that years ago, you know, any pilot, if they were having trouble, if they were struggling, they could just call, knock it off, knock it off. And everybody, everybody would stop fighting. Everyone would go wings level. Everybody would just t take a review of, you know, where they were and what they were doing if there was a problem to deal with. So, you know, as I said, you know, a dogfight can be quite uh, dynamic and intensive. So can intraday trading. So here's, you know, a little rule to help you. Three losses on the trot, then knock it off, knock it off. Okay. Stop yourself. Okay. That's not to say that, you know, the next few trades could be winners, but what I've tended to find over the years of managing traders and working on trading floors is that, you know, if you're, if you're three losses on the trot, the, the likelihood is you are out of tune with the market. And that happens to everybody. That happens to me. OK, that happens to everybody. Then, you know, nobody, nobody escapes that. OK, nobody, nobody escapes that. That is part of trading. That's part of your experience as a trader. And as I said earlier, it's about how you manage that is what will help determine long term success. So here's uh, one of my other uh, kind of rules for intraday trading. OK, and, you know, from personal experience and also from uh, experience with, uh, you know, coaching, managing, working with lots of other traders is that if you've not made your uh, if you've not made your you know, your wins in the morning, um, then you are unlikely to make it in the afternoon, especially within FX markets. And this is on an intraday basis, okay? This is on an intraday basis. You know, so what we tend to find in the FX market is that here in the UK, you know, certainly in Europe, you know, that kind of European session is the major session for FX. And, you know, that's when it tends to will make a move that is tradable. And, you know, what I've found over the years, okay, as I said, from myself, from working with traders, working on trading floors, is that, you know, if you've been unsuccessful in the morning, well, then you are unlikely um, to, to, to have a good afternoon because in the FX world, in particular in the afternoon, we have the Americans coming in. We also have the Europeans starting to drift down. It can be a bit more uh, scratchy in terms of the actual price action. So my suggestion is, you know, that you either scale down your position sizing. OK, so if you're risking one percent per trade, they'll scale it down. Maybe it's half percent, maybe it's quarter percent, maybe it's in smaller than that or or you don't trade at all all right so it's just about managing the risk managing the risk okay and invariably what will happen is you know you'll do it once or twice is that you know you'll have a poor morning and then you'll ignore my advice and try it in the afternoon and you know you might get away with it but as a general rule of thumb for your long-term trading career if you've not had a good morning you are unlikely to have a good afternoon okay in the morning you're fresh okay you well you should be fresh if you're trading as the day goes on you know your decision making capacity sort of gets burnt out all right okay because of the the operating at the particular levels that, that's required when you're intraday trading so do yourself a favor all right manage yourself all right as i said managing yourself can be the best way to manage risk in intraday trading rule number three I'm um, sharing with you for managing risk during intraday trading is know your numbers. Okay, know your numbers. And what does that mean? Well, that means know your position sizing for the day, week, month ahead. Um, for intraday trading, I suggest static position sizing. And what that means is that I only amend my position sizing at the end of the week or the month, not on a trade by trade basis, which is what people would call us look at as dynamic position sizing. Okay, what I suggest is just know your numbers in terms of your position sizing and, and know it for that week okay for intraday trading just static position sizing so it might be let's just say for example 
that you know that you know just doing simple sums in my head that you know one percent of your trading account is a thousand dollars all right so for every one of that trades that week you know that's your position size is a thousand dollars no more no less or if you're doing half percent it'd be five hundred dollars or a quarter it'd be two hundred and fifty dollars if you're scaling down but it's static and at the end of the week, well, then then you work out what one percent is um, is is available, or you know what it what it relates to, because if you're trying to do that trade by trade during the intraday market, you know it can be a bit scrappy, it can be a bit scruffy, it can be a bit distracting. So I tend to suggest that you know you just have static position sizing during the week, okay, and then re reassess it at the weekend or at the end of the month based upon your own particular rules. And with that to help you, you can also create position sizing matrices. So just a reminder, we'll talk more about this in a future session about, you know, really understanding position sizing is that you know, when I look at position sizing, what I'm identifying is, is my trade risk divided by my capital risk gives me my position size. Uh, and a very quick understanding of that. Let me just bring up the old pen here, just an example here. So, um, you know, in terms of my trade risk, I'm understanding my trade risk is, you know, you know, what is my entry as opposed to where is my stop loss, okay? And the, the number in FX markets, right you know my uh my pips or you know maybe it's points okay if you're trading uh, other asset classes you know understanding how much of that is my effect is my trade risk and then i'm dividing that by my capital risk my capital risk for me is you know as a general rule of thumb is a, is a one percent of my trading account okay so let's say once again if you've got a thousand a hundred thousand pound trading account one percent of that will be a thousand dollars and that's it so i'm dividing my trade risk by my capital risk so you know let's say for i'm just doing simple sums in my head let's say my trade risk in that particular example was you know 50 pips excuse my uh, excuse my writing i'm a better trader than i am an artist but you know if i have 50 pips and my capital risk is a thousand dollars well then you know trading you know dividing the capital risk by the trade risk okay means that my position size is that you know, i'm trading at 20 dollars uh, a pip which is a you know effectively you know depending on what trading is around about two contracts per uh, per you know per uh, uh, for the position okay and that allows means made that I have my position size in place which means that I'm never risking more than my entire capital risk on that trade all right so um you know that's what we'd always be looking to do uh, and I appreciate these days actually you know these days we have you know there's fantastic tools out there that can help you okay both in terms of what's on the active trades website but also equally else on the internet in terms of helping you with your position size there's some fantastic tools out there that you can utilize all right that to, to help you and make it even even simpler and easier for it. but ultimately uh, at heart you should understand what position sizing is okay and you should understand you know, that kind of relationship between trade risk and capital risk and how that creates your position size okay that uh, it, that is important for all traders to to fully uh, to fully understand um so yeah, as part of as I said, rule number three, you can you know you can create your own position sizing matrix. As I said, um, actually, there's lots of tools and apps these days that you can take on board to utilize these. I actually built up my own one, okay, and it's just very simple. But what it does is it helps me with the static position sizing in terms of looking at you know what is my trade balance, what would be you know what would be because I have I have both uh, accounts in sterling and accounts in dollar. So, you know what would be my position size okay well how would i do it if it was two percent one percent half percent quarter percent so i can very quickly understand okay you know uh, a what i'm risking but also you know what what my stop losses are may have a general stop loss if it's 20 pips okay you know i can basically quickly work out okay what my position size in matrix is as i said there are uh, these days there are lots of fabulous apps and, and websites that can do this for you but you know i, I actually just had it for myself because it actually it just it helped me work out what i was particularly uh, looking to do okay and so and um, you know you can do that it's not it's not it's terribly difficult I, you know i, I don't uh, in any way uh, purport to have you know the fantastic uh excel you know super skills okay but you can just do it a very simple okay way to just have you know just to to help you in terms of static position sizing understanding risk understanding you know, what uh, you know what a contract is okay in terms of certainly in the fx markets in terms of you know what is it in terms of dollars what terms it in terms of ster sterling because that is my own currency you know i appreciate you maybe joining me from you know from all over the world to understand that and actually how you can create that to, to do that and it's, it's not it's not terribly difficult to, uh, to to do and it can actually help you enormously in terms of just helping as i say manage your risk and understanding what's the uh, what you're looking at so you know uh, rule number four for managing risk during intraday trading is that less is more all right less is more 
And what I mean by that is, you know, in terms of intraday um, risk management, is that risk less than you think you should, right? Generally, on my intraday trading, I generally am risking about a quarter of a percent per trade. All right, that's generally, you know, I, I consider most of my trading is swing trading and longer term trading. My intraday trading, I, I enjoy it, I love it, but I'm risking less. Now, of course, that quarter of percent can be different based upon, of course, the size of the trading account you're working with. But, you know, generally, as a rule of thumb, what I say is I have, you know, a quarter percent per trade and also a max of 2% per day. Um, and, it, it, you know, I, well, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get anywhere near that, okay, because I'm effectively only risking quarter percent per trade. If there's like three losses on the trot, I knock it off, okay, uh, and so invariably I'm managing risk and being aggressive in terms of managing that risk for me as, a, as the way that I operate. Now, some people would like to do dynamic and aggressive risk management, you know, they might want to just go up and down between quarter percent, two percent, that's, that's absolutely fine, okay. But the, as I said, the important thing is the concept is in place in terms of risk less than you think you should, okay, as an intraday trader, right, okay? And that allows you, gives you room for maneuver. It also takes the pressure off you, uh, you know, and especially, you know, when things are happening fast, it just allows you to operate just a little bit more, uh, a bit more effectively. Or certainly, certainly that is what I have found myself. And uh, rule number five when it comes to managing risk is, yeah, debrief, 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 okay? Um, you heard me talk about it a little bit earlier and talk, you know, hint about it is that, you know, at the end of the day, if, if let's say you've been trading intraday, maybe you've been trading intraday all day, maybe you've just done a session, maybe you've done a couple of sessions, make sure you close down your shop, all right? And what I mean by that is that get all your post-trade records complete. Um, we'll talk more about that in future sessions in terms of, you know, keeping good records to ensure that, you know, your trading improves, but you should be keeping a good Excel spreadsheet of your trades, okay, in terms of, you know, uh, keeping all the data from it and equally a trade journal for each trade, just writing down the details of that trade, taking a snapshot of the, the charts, writing down, you know, what did I learn, what were the three things that I've learned from this particular trade. And then, as I say, then debrief, all right, debrief, sit and go through it, go through those trades. You have paid for those trades in time, energy, and capital. It's your imperative to basically get as, mo as much value as you can out of those particular trades. Um, you know, I, I tell a story of you know, the first hedge fund I worked for. You know, I insisted that we would have on we'd have Thursday at kind of Thursday three thirty for the last ninety minutes or so, last two hours. That actually uh, all of us on the trading floor we would stop the uh, stop our uh, um, trading, okay, and actually for those two hours we would all basically we would sit and talk through our trades. Everyone had to stand up and present on their trades, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and all of the traders hated doing it at first, right? They hated it because they had to show, you know, the, the poor trades, their poor choices, poor decisions. But we all went through and we all debriefed our trading together. And within two months, you know, traders are saying it was the best thing that had happened to them because they basically, they got to basically talk about the trades. They got to learn from other people's mistakes and they got to take away their learning points to improve their trading and their trading did improve. You know, debriefing your trades, keeping good records and then debriefing your trades. It's one of the only ways to get better, ladies and gentlemen, right? And part of that is about helping you manage risk by just improving. You know, if you find yourself, you're making the same mistake, day after day after day, well then you know, that will show up in the debrief and that will that will then effectively become the the you know the number one priority on your um you know on your on your to-do list okay because that's what you need to do to improve as a trader. So take the time to debrief okay I assure you a lot of people don't do it because you know they think if they've had a challenging day they just want to get away from their desk but I assure you okay lean into it dig into it okay Take all the learning you can through because it is it is what will make you a better trade tomorrow, and and a lot of that as a new trader is about you know what can I do today to make myself a better trader tomorrow because that is actually what's key. That's what's important to us. So before we switch to the live charts, in, in conclusion, right? Intraday trading is a popular endeavor with trader because it's you know there's pace and there's opportunities there for us. However, as everything gets speeded up, it also allows the opportunity to make mistakes, okay? You're only human, we all do, it's part of the human condition. But what it means is it becomes imperative to ensure that a trader is managing risk, okay? And is very, very clued up and is very keen and accurate at risk management. One of the things it can do to help is to have little processes and checklists in place to help you with your endeavor, to make sure that you're doing the right thing, trade after trade, session after session. 
And you know, why I say this? To begin with, ensure that you risk small amounts until you're comfortable trading lower time frames. People think that you know they can go from trading you know daily charts to five minute charts because the candles look the same, which they do. But everything is happening much much faster, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're not ready, if you're not prepared for for it, you will make mistakes. Okay, so do yourself a favor, take on board the lessons from here today, and just help yourself be the best trader that you can be by making sure you're doing the right things and then making sure that you are managing intraday risk that is absolutely crucial so before we uh, switch across the charts just a, a note that you know um, for our session next week 21st of november we're going to be talking about trading squeezes you know what's the difference in trading a long squeeze or a short squeeze we've had a few of them firing off in the last week or so so um i have uh, even if i say so myself uh, i have timed that to perfection to put that in there for next week okay because uh, you know there's a few there that we'll be able to look at and talk about well what what does it mean and actually you know how do we actually trade it so, as I said, um, if you want to contact Active Trades, you can do okay. The number there for the English desk is 0207 or email englishdesk at activetrades.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. We'd love to hear your thoughts. If there are comments or queries or topics that you'd like to see you know, me cover during these Monday Market Matters, just drop a note there. That would be all very good. You know, We're very happy to take that on board. We want to make these sessions as useful for you as you possibly can. So. I hope you found that useful. If you just bear with us, what we're going to do is I'm going to switch across to the active trades platforms now and we'll have a little look. You know, the US markets will have just opened and we just like to see what's going on and how, you know, how they're setting up for the start of this particular week. So just bear with me a moment and what we'll do is we'll switch across to the charts now. So um, I hope you can still all hear me. I'm hoping that you can uh, see the uh, MetaTrader platform here and some of the charts. Um, this is what we're going to look at is we'll just start with a dollar. I just come up here on the dollar. I have a, I've mentioned this this week. I have a profile here, which is just about the US dollar, which is really about ensuring that, you know, within FX markets, the US dollar is the daddy. What we're looking to try and do is to basically sort of just, you know, build it up and uh, and give ourselves a good snapshot of what's going on within those FX markets. Because if we know what the dollar's doing, well, that helps us, especially with trading the majors. And, you know, here I have is a, for, if you're joining us for the first time here, you know, um, as I have a profile here and let me just uh, bring up the old um, pen here. So I have a profile here and, and at the bottom here, which we're going to look at, this is the dollar index, which we're going to talk about in a moment. But here I've got the Australian against the US dollar. Here I've got the Kiwi dollar against the US dollar, euro against the US dollar, dollar against Canadian dollar, pound against US dollar, dollar against Japanese yen, dollar against Swiss franc. And I said, I can have these and have them on there. And at a quick glance, I can have a good understanding of what is going on within those markets. But the first place I'll start with is the dollar index. Now, um, I don't tend to trade the dollar index but i do use it as a instrument to help me analyze the dollar if you're not aware of it, the dollar index is literally it's the dollar against a basket of currencies um you know of these major currencies that also includes I think, the norwegian krona and the swedish krona but it's about 57 percent made up um, from the euro so you know, you're getting towards two-thirds of it so in fact what you will see is the the dollar index and the euro dollar there's a really strong correlation there okay inverse correlation so um the weekly chart here for the dollar we're going to go down to intraday in a moment but you know just starting as always just looking at how the markets are setting up this was the weekly chart here and uh, last week we had this uh rejection candle here which i was telling you know clients and stuff that that was not uh you know it was not a very bullish candle okay you know what we were seeing is we were effectively seeing basically lower highs all the way and then this is a real rejection candle and then boy you know what did we get last week we got a real collapse down there didn't we and so um i personally i think we you know we, we will go lower but it, and you know i think basically what we'll do i suspect we might drift back up to that area and have a rejection candle before we move down and then also that creates a head and shoulders um formation which is a big weekly reverse pattern so that's my scenario and you know when i i like to have a scenario when i play that scenario i'll trade it but if the scenario doesn't play it well then i have to just read it but that's what i'm just looking at on the uh, on the sort of the 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 dollar index there okay you know the the dollar is you know it's it's, it's weakened considerably there uh, and we can see that across other uh, other interests which we're going to look at and then we'll look at the uh, us indices so if you look at the daily charts okay um you know what i talked about here okay um for clients is that you know we had here this was a bearish key reversal 
followed by another bearish key reversal, followed by another bearish key reversal. Once again, always just making lower highs before you can see last week price broke down. And you know, we had kind of Thursday and Friday, okay, working on you know, the CPI numbers that we had, okay, and there was just a continuation of that. And I, and I think that might have been that day, Thursday might have been something like, you know, kind of the biggest dollar sell off day for many, you know, for, for a good long time, okay. And that was just showing an indication of, of you know, the, the kind of the, uh, everyone was ready to sell the dollar. That in itself is a reflection of the long dollar. It was a very, very crowded trade, been a very crowded trade, been a very strong trade for the, for the vast majority of 2022. But like my uh, um, childhood uh, rock group, Echo and the Bunnymen sang, you know, nothing ever lasts forever. And, and that's the same for uh, FX trends. And again, same for trends in any market, nothing ever lasts forever. So you enjoy it whilst you can, but you also realize that, you know, nothing ever lasts forever. And that's what we've seen there. And as I said, I suspect we might kind of get a bit of a pullback towards the end of the year before it moves down and that that's my scenario and we will see how that plays out over the uh, over the next couple of weeks <clears throat> but you know what we can see here from that doing that on the the dollar well have a look at how did that reflect against other instruments well you know as i said the mostly made up of the uh, dollar index is made up a lot from the euro and um, so we can see here on the weekly chart that you know and, and those of you who've sort of joined my session before we can see that this is a weekly chart okay and really what we had was euro weakening and the us dollar you know strengthening here when we broke here big round number you remember this remember i was talking about drawing making sure you draw in even if you're an intraday trade make sure you're drawing in those you know those big levels those big round numbers and because what we saw was you know prices pivoted around that price is always maneuvering around that and it doesn't matter what time frame you trade that can be useful information to you to, to basically to, to understand and work with and you know what we saw is you know you can see for yourself that you know, last week in the same week we had a really down week in the dollar index we had a really strong up week in the euro dollar remember what i was saying there was an inverse correlation there and that's why you know doing this analysis helps us with our uh, helps us with our uh, trading so we down to the daily chart the daily chart, and I think we might have talked about this, you know, on a, on occasion, is that you know it had been in a fantastic downtrend, and the 50 period moving average, the red 50 period moving average, which I have in my charts, had always acted as you know really nice um, persistence. But here we broke it, we came back down to it, and we rallied up ahead. And what I was saying is that here was a bullish engulfing, here was bullish engulfing, here was bullish engulfing, and also we were getting higher lows all the way, higher lows all the way. And you can see the price is now bang. It's up above the 200 there, up above 10, you know, 103 is hanging on there, and that's a, you know, that's a big difference, okay? And and uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if we drifted down before we moved up, and that's what that's the scenario we'll be uh, we'll be particularly looking at at the moment. So, as I said, you know, you start to do this analysis and get into a routine of it, it helps you enormously because you start to build a picture, all right? You build a picture of what what is going on and actually how you can how you can utilize all of this information to help you. So. We saw there, you know, the dollar index was rolling over, the euro strengthening against the uh, the dollar. If I look at, you know, dollar against the Swiss franc, the weekly chart, you know, not massively dissimilar in, in some respects to the uh, into the you know, what we looked at the dollar index. We had a high, we had, you know, real rejection candle there. Okay, this is you know what I, one of my favorite patterns, a one, two, three pan, and then you can see what happened last week there. Okay, the dollar collapsed against the Swiss franc. So. What we're seeing is, you know, the dollar, which has been strong for so long, you know, is starting to weaken and losing its strength across, you know, uh, you know, across the board, you know, and we can see if the dollar, there's the, you know, the US dollar against the Swiss franc, you know, on the thing, we can see that it actually just dropped our way down there. And, uh, uh, and then basically, you know, we can see from here, we had this big bearish engulfing, bearish key reversal candle, tries to push up but it can't and it dropped down again okay and that's just giving us indication of you know what was what was what was coming um we'll have a little look at uh here we go the you know all these kind of dollar pairs here have a look at dollar yen so dollar yen you know we talked about uh, if we go to the monthly chart we've still got a long way to go on that but if we go to the weekly chart here and we talked about last week how last week's candle was a bit of a spinning top it's a bit of an indecision candle you know and uh you know it's inside bar as well underneath that 150 level where we'd had a rejection candle uh, and actually how you know that daily we'd had here you go this is the daily chart the dollar against the yen and what we'd had was you know we had the first sign of bank of japan intervention there then we had the second one at 150 uh, and what we were saying is that price you know price is making lower lows it's coming up and then we can see the 20 the blue 20 period moving average which is acted as support 
is suddenly starting to turn into resistance. Okay, the, the moving average is rolling over. Price is getting squeezed, okay, between the, the 50, the red 50, the blue 20, and we can see for self, Bosch, it actually dropped, you know, and, and if you think about that, you know, we've been up here, you know, over the last kind of month, we've been from like, you know, 150, 150 down to 138.50, you know, what, 1300 pip, you know, move, okay, and I'm not suggesting that, you know, you can catch all of that, but there was, you know, there was, there was pieces of that that can do that as we saw that swing away from the US dollar, right? And that's why I kind of like to do this analysis on uh, a lot of that on the weekends, okay? Because you can start to see the kind of the, you know, when you're starting to see shifts like this occur, you know, from the back of news, back across, uh, you know, a whole host of these currencies and stuff, well, that starts to make you interested. That starts to basically make us think, well, hang on a minute, you know, there, there's a there's something going on here and I, you know, and I need to be, you know, I need to be aware of it. I need to be basically getting ready to uh, to trade it. So um, let's have a look at the, uh, uh, let's have a little look at the US indices, okay, to finish off for these last few minutes. We'll bring that up to show you how I do that because, you know, they, they opened about 20 odd minutes ago. Look at how, you know, how they're uh, playing out to start the, uh, the, the sort of the, the week. And, you know, what I've often talked about is that, you know, for intraday trading, I, I tend to let the uh, the markets do their thing for the first 15 to 30 minutes, you know, one for months they open just to allow, you know, kind of overnight orders or a bit of volatility to wash its way in and out. That's the that's the way I like to particularly uh, work. I find that that just helps me. Some people like to trade before, you know, the market opens, some like to trade into it. That's that's fine. I mean, I can only give you my particular um, my particular views. So I'm going to start on a bigger picture first. So Dow, Dow weekly chart. Here we go. Um, the weekly chart is, you know, we can see. Let's get the old drawing tool up here. Gosh. We can see that you know we've had some great moves off that weekly 50 period moving average in the past. We came down. We rallied strongly up, and now last week, okay, we're above that 50. Uh, you know, and what I'm interested to see now as well, does that now, what has once been resistance, is that now going to turn to support? Would it come down and test that there? Would that now become support? We can see the 20 is turned up, right? 50 is going to move there. Could, could price drift its way down and see if the support they're making once again? All right, higher lows, okay? That could be uh, that could be of interest in that. We will, we'll keep an eye on that over the year. Uh, Keep an eye on that over the next few uh, over the next few particular weeks, and then if I look down at the daily chart, okay, well, you know that is just after that daily chart pulling that just lovely double bottom there, and we've just basically rallied our way up above thirty thousand, okay, and worked away. Now we're up above the the, the two hundred period moving average. Yes, we can see we are, we were a bit giddy there, okay, at the end of last week, right, because of the CPI numbers were not as bad as people were expecting, and um, but as I said, I wouldn't surprise me if we drifted down. What is of interest to me is that if I just put this on the weekly charts here, and what I've got here is this is another profile that I've just set up here. Uh, you can see down here, which is just US indices. What I've got here is this is the Dow, this is the, the Russell 2000, this is the NASDAQ, and this is the S&P 500. What we can see is the Dow has been the leader. See how the Dow has rallied away and it's up above the 50? The NASDAQ has actually been a bit of a laggard there. It's, you know, yes, it had a good week, but it's still very slow. The S&P 500 is not here, it's above the 20, okay, and it's the Russell is getting the one next to, to, to the 50 as well. So you can start to gauge which the one's moving the fastest in the new direction to do that. But what I'm interested in really is, well, how are the markets opening today? And, you know, we can see that, you know, as I said, we've got the G20 conferences. There'll be lots of people sort of talking about, you know, what happened last week. Also lots of people talking about, you know, the, uh, the shenanigans with FTX, okay. Uh, and what we can see here is let's just... Let's just maybe even move these down a little bit further. Is that you know as that market is opened, as markets have opened here for the uh, for the Monday, what we can see is that you know there was a lot of movement there. That 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 down there, you know, a lot of volatility there. As I said here on the even on the uh, IWM, you can see it even on S and P 500. We can see there was lots of move there. We can see it's shifting about left, right, and centre. And that's uh, that's why I tend to leave it right for the first 15 to 30. Minutes just let the market, you know, work itself out, work out what it wants to do, clear out its orders, or I right? clear out the volatility, and then you know, from what would be 3 p.m. London time, right, it would be different from wherever you are in the world, then start to look at well, actually, how does the market move? Is it is it setting up that it's going to be a trending day, or is it going to be setting up that it's going to be a ranging day? If, it's, if there's a couple of patterns that I see, then then that kind of appeals to me as a ranging day. If there's a couple, you know, you start to see like you know, if there's a trend building. And I can see the correlation across these four instruments, well, then that can help me. Because at the moment, when I look at this today, 
right? Just one second, I'll pick up with this. You know, um, Dow is pushing up, NASDAQ is pushing down, okay? S&P doesn't know what it wants to do, uh, and the uh, uh, the Russell was pushing down. So uh, I like to see all of them in correlation. When they're not in correlation like this, that chart tends to maybe say, well, okay, let's just let's just sit and wait and watch and see what happens, okay, and let the let the market play its hand. I'm not in a rush. I'm not trying to leap in. I'm just basically let's see, you know, let's let the market play its hand, and then I'm going to look to uh, to to follow it in whatever direction it particularly chooses to uh, to to operate. So. Um, I'll be sort of sat on my hand probably for the next 20 minutes as I sit and watch this and let it let it work out what it wants to actually um, what it wants to actually do, which way it's going to do. And we've got a little bit of news. We've, as I said, we've got comments from the US Federal Reserve. There will undoubtedly be bits of snippets of information coming out from the G20 as well. All of these things feed into to basically being able to uh, and to to you know to to build a picture about you know how I'd like to do intraday trading, okay, uh, on those US indices this afternoon. Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You know we've um, basically just you know come towards the uh, end of our uh, end of our session. Okay, time flies when you're uh, uh, having fun. Um, as always, uh, I hope you found that uh, uh, information useful. I hope it's given you a little bit of insight into a ways that you can manage risk, but also b just having a little look at what's been going on in those markets in terms of the U.S. indices and the dollar as we get ready for the start of the, uh, the U.S. session this uh, this afternoon. Um, as always, okay, uh, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading. Remember that uh, um, we will also have our Monday Market Matters session next Monday, 2 o'clock, London time, where we're going to be talking about trading a, uh, a long and a short squeeze, uh, and I'll be explaining what that is and how we can utilize that information to, to help us trade better. So it uh, goes without saying, have a fabulous trading week, ladies and gentlemen. Look forward to speaking to you soon, and uh, trade well, everybody. Many thanks.